no one stands taller through the course of Martin Marietta Materials history than Steve Zelnick, an icon whose imprint is woven into the fabric of all things Martin Marietta. Zelnick impressed a number of values upon the company and its employees in his 27 years at the helm, establishing a code of ethics, setting a tone for professionalism and work ethic, and implementing a unique vision that positioned Martin Marietta as a construction materials powerhouse in the United States. Zelnick's career at Martin Marietta began in 1981 when he joined what was then the Martin Marietta Corporation, a large aerospace defense contractor that possessed a struggling aggregates division. Zelnick took over the division in 1982, providing plentiful revenues and profits by the late 1980s relative to the rest of the company. As Zelnick says, we were cash flowing beautifully. Zelnick, who grew Martin Marietta revenues from $450 million to more than $2.2 billion during his tenure as CEO, positioned the company for growth behind the implementation of his long-haul distribution strategy. Zelnick envisioned increasing Martin Marietta's reserves in major markets, from North Carolina to the Mexican border, and to serve those markets efficiently by rail and by sea. He saw markets along U.S. coastlines and 30 miles inland as high growth opportunities because populations were increasing and construction materials were geologically lacking. Not everyone shared Zelnick's vision for growth, though. Many within Martin Marietta and the aggregates industry thought Zelnick had the wrong vision and arrows were cast his way. Still, he stood firm to his beliefs with the understanding that strategically positioning reserves while building up a supportive distribution network would best serve Martin Marietta and aggregate starved markets in the long term. In all, Zelnick was responsible for more than 70 acquisitions that broadened the company's geographic footprint. And in an industry that largely distributes construction materials by truck, Zelnick played a huge role shaping Martin Marietta into a model of efficiency that moves more than 20% of its products by rail. Zelnick shaped Martin Marietta in other ways too, leading the IPO of Martin Marietta stock in 1994. Martin Marietta initially offered 7.65 million shares at $23 each. Yet, within the first hour of trading, shares were moving at nearly $26. The initial offering was a home run for the company. Later in 1996, Zelnick led the offering of the remaining stock held by Lockheed Martin, making Martin Marietta an independent New York Stock Exchange listed company. According to Zelnick, Martin Marietta shares stretched as high as $168 on his watch. Still, Zelnick's impact at Martin Marietta went far beyond the company's finances. He left a foundation of highly ethical behavior. As Martin Marietta's Ann Lloyd says, you always know what to do here because you do the right thing. Don James asked me uh, what it is that I was going to talk about tonight. We both uh, felt that the right thing was happening with Rick Felt as leading. Between the two of them, they've already said anything. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with both Rick and Don over the years, both of them great people, great leaders, and both of them very focused on contributing to the growth and welfare of the aggregates industry. And uh, on their watch, with all the contributions that they have made, the aggregate industry has certainly prospered and is a much better place. I want to thank Pitt and Quarry for, and the sponsors for what has been a fabulous event tonight. Very special, exceptionally well done, and most enjoyable. And I know they put a lot of thought into this, uh, so I've just kind of blown away. It's a, really a first class event. I want to say a few special words about my wife, Judy. Uh, we're coming up on 47 years of partnering together on everything. Uh, I got to talk about it, and she had to listen to uh, well, all the things that went on at Martin Marietta and other things going on in my career. Uh, I could not have had anyone who was more supportive, uh, no matter what was going on. And there was a lot going on. Uh, frankly, if I hadn't had that support, I'm not so sure I'd be standing up here. Uh, she has just meant the world to me in terms of 
supporting me personally in my career. And when you get an award like this, it makes you I'd like you to reflect back, but in my case, I said, how in the world did I get into the aggregates business? And I'm going to tell you that story quickly. I was in the U.S. Army and I volunteered to be uh, explosive ordnance uh, disposal officer or bomb disposal guy. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. We got to wear red baseball caps uh, on the base. And the reason for that was so that they could identify the certified lunatics who did this. Everything was going really well. I was thinking about making a career in the Army. And then one day I got a call from a major at the Pentagon and he said, Lieutenant, you have been selected to be the aide to General So-and-so. And he wants you to report to Pusan, Korea within 30 days. And all this is sounding pretty good because you young lieutenant uh, being offered this general's aid job in the Army was a big deal. And then he got to the other part. He said, it will be an unaccompanied tour, which meant my wife and my young son weren't coming. So that took care of that immediately. I wasn't going anywhere about them. So it's time to get out of the army. So I needed a job. So I accepted the job with a financial services company, Lincoln National in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But for those who don't know, Fort Wayne's really cool. <laughs> we don't do cold well. So I kept looking. And on one Sunday morning, I saw an advertisement in the newspaper for a market research analyst at some company in Birmingham, Alabama. And it was a company called Vulcan Materials. I had no idea who they were. And they did something called aggregates. And I had no idea what that was. But I knew something about market research. So I applied. A fellow named Bill Grayson, who many of you knew hired me and that's how I got on the aggregates track. And what was really neat is once I learned something about it, just like in the Army where I got to blow things up as well as disarm, the aggregates business you blow things up. I mean, <laughs> this is really good. Uh, as, I, as I spent more time in the business and got to know it, you know, it became clear to me that it was a really special industry and I was blessed to be in. You know, it is an industry that's the foundation of America. It's the industry that truly builds America. But as I went out and I met people, it was people who are the backbone of America. And that's what impressed me. You know, a special group of people, hardworking, totally committed to what they're doing, truly committed to doing it in the right way. And I said, you know, I, I just couldn't have picked a better place. And I landed here in an odd way. But uh, as I said, it has been a true blessing. I got to run uh, Martin Marietta for 27 years. Uh, we set out on a course there that the objective was to create a culture that was highly ethical and high performance. And we had some success in doing that. And if you look at what we've accomplished over the years, uh, there's no question that I'm standing up here because of the exceptional people at Martin Marietta who did extraordinary things. And I'm just extremely proud of them. I'm also proud of the continuity. Uh, Ward and I took over at the beginning of 2010. He has taken that culture forward. He has grown the company. Ann Lloyd is here, who many of you know. Uh, she was my choice as uh, CFO. And she's done a tremendous job with the company. Uh, one of the things we're particularly proud of in Martin is that we are a true equal opportunity employer. We've got as many women in the senior management as we do guys. And actually when things have got tough on occasion, I've just said, let's send them the girl because they'll get it done. It's probably the guys. And the fact is they take great pride in that. And the guys on the other end don't know how to handle it. So it was just strategic well. As, as I reflect on this, uh, yeah, I couldn't have crafted uh, a better script line for my life, my career. And I thought about it. If you had the opportunity to write the script again, what would you change? The fact is, I wouldn't change a single line in that script. It's good for me. And I love the associations, the great people that I've had an opportunity to hang out with, become friends with. And I just thank all of you for 
coming tonight to support all three of us. And it's, it's made for a very special evening. I thank you very much.